Up until now, nearly all array design tools fail to answer the question of how to get a desired performance from the boxes available. Most stop at showing the result of a particular array configuration, expecting the user to adjust display angles, aiming angles, height, box gains and EQs, and inspect the results. If they're not quite right, the user tries changing something and starts over, until either time or patience have run out. Our new software reverses this sequence. You can start with what you want to hear and the software works backwards to tell you what combination of position, shape and individual elemental EQ is needed to achieve that result. Display 2 is the brain of MLA. It takes the guesswork out of array design. Before we see some results of the optimization process, we need to understand index plot. Our new presentation format, which lets you see the sound levels produced throughout the venue at all frequencies in one view. It's a lot easier to understand when you actually have the software in front of you. But this should give you a rough idea. So here is a venue. Actually the Martin Audio factory floor with an array of eight boxes. Each little red dot is a virtual microphone position and we put more of them on the audience than on the roof and walls. This is the frequency response from the array at an evenly spaced selection within the intended audience area. Because they all overlay, it's confusing. We can't really make out what's going on at any single position. What we can do is plot all of the frequency responses on a surface rather than a 2D graph. Frequency is along the bottom still, with position or microphone index up the left-hand side. Now we can see all the frequency responses at all the positions in the venue slice. This is the audience area region. The blue area in the top right tells us that high frequency output at the back of the venue is low. The bright red areas in the bottom left indicate we have a good deal of LF buildup close to the array. This strip represents the back wall. We see almost no HF output here, meaning that our aiming angle is pretty good. Here is the output on the roof. Thankfully, much quieter than the audience area, with just a couple of artefacts breaking through. Here's the output behind the array. Again, pretty quiet. Finally, the stage area is the strip right at the bottom. In order to optimise array EQ and shape parameters by computation, properties such as response smoothness and SPL variation with distance must be represented by a single number. The user can then specify the relative importance of each metric to arrive at the best compromise and use them to change the performance of the system. By employing these high-level controls, the user can avoid tedious manipulation of low-level parameters such as splay angles and individual cell EQ. With the same array and venue as before, we can examine the effect of the various metrics in isolation using the index plot to display the results. The lower index plot represents the uniformly driven starting point. The upper plot is the result of numerically optimising the array with only the smoothness metric active. This measure only seeks to minimise the difference between each frequency. Looking at the result, it appears that the response at 200 Hz has been extruded along the frequency axis. If we had started at another frequency, we would have a different SPL profile in terms of how the SPL changes with distance from the array. The leakage metric compares the level of the output over audience and non-audience regions. The index plot shows considerable attenuation in non-audience regions, particularly the roof and directly below the array. It is worth noting that the performance within the audience region has suffered somewhat, but retains a very similar overall pattern. We can specify an SPL profile of 0 dB. What we mean by this is that the level at coverage start and coverage stop relative to the mix position, is 0 dB. We see that the response is now extruded along the position axis, with a trend following that of the original response average. Whilst interesting to examine, this type of specification for SPL profile may not be such a good idea from a psychoacoustic perspective. A more useful specification for profile is plus 2 dB at coverage start, minus 2 dB at coverage stop. In the index plot, 
we see a gradual reduction in level as the index position increases. A selection of audience response plots shows that they all fit within a tight 4 dB window. The simplest metric of all is to simply require the same output everywhere. This type of specification in isolation is again more of technical interest, but the extent to which it can be achieved is remarkable. We have seen how some of the objective functions behave in isolation. However, the real power of the optimization process is in combining them. Our multi-objective optimization algorithms enable us to specify goals in a meaningful way. This index plot represents a combination of the smoothness and profile metrics. The result is a system with a very consistent frequency response throughout the audience, which changes in level as we wish. This is good for some conditions, but it could be improved by reducing the output on the roof and stage. The lower index plot shows the result of including some of the leakage metric. Output on non-audience regions has been substantially reduced, although there is some deterioration within audience regions. A result between the two plots could be achieved by simply adjusting the leakage metric. We can do more than simply optimise for static conditions. Whilst it's not possible to steer the array in the traditional sense, we can adjust the vertical coverage without physically moving the array. This index plot demonstrates a reduction in coverage stop by 7 metres, using the same values for the optimization metrics as before. We can see that this has little effect on the quality of the output over the remaining audience area at mid and high frequencies. At low frequencies, we are limited by the physical size of the array. The lower plot shows the result of a 15 metre reduction in the coverage stop. The low frequencies are again compromised by the array lengths. In such circumstances, it would be wise to allow more low frequency overspill than that of the mid and high frequencies. This will preserve the frequency balance throughout the audience region. It is also possible to extend the coverage of the array. To demonstrate this, we optimise the array shape to cover the audience region between 8 and 43 metres and can see the result in the index plot. The aim is to cover to the 53 metre point and, of course, optimise the entire audience region. The array can easily adapt to the new requirements without substantially affecting the quality of the output on audience regions. Sometimes, we may want to avoid directing sound onto a particular area, such as a highly reflective balcony edge. A 12 dB null about 8 metres wide in the middle of an audience region can be produced over a surprisingly wide bandwidth. Restricting the lower frequency of the null would be a sensible thing to do in this instance, and it should be remembered that the reverberant field contribution will dominate at the null position. So far, we have been using our acoustic model to examine the output of the system. In order to validate the process, we need to measure the output of an actual array. This is the Martin Audio Factory floor, with 8 MLA flown at 6.8 metres and covering from 4 to 35 metres. These are the responses obtained within the audience area of a uniformly driven array. What we can't see very clearly is the change of balance from front to back. Some responses have a pink trend, whilst others are flatter, depending on where you stand. The mixed metric optimization mentioned earlier was applied to this array and measured at the same positions. Immediately, we can see that all the responses fit within a tight vertical window of around 4 dB as desired. Individual responses are substantially flatter than the uniformly driven starting point, and the overall level decreases gently from front to back. An impressive result.